went to winterize the Echo Flow blade uh, just by putting it away for the winter. Don't need the battery sitting down here or in the snow and such. And as I was looking, I noticed that the uh, uh, blade assembly unit wasn't there. So I literally had to walk around the yard to find out uh, where it was and eventually found the Frisbee. So um, it is uh, got a loose nut inside of the little uh, plastic container there. It's got four uh, screws on it. So I'm, I really have not really found anywhere to read to find what to do to replace this. But my thought is I'm going to give it a shot and take those screws off, see if I can get this uh, unit back on there and, and uh, give it a shot. And of course, remember that these blades are interesting. Um, the other part too is I'm not sure, but they, those look really I'm a little bit surprised the uh, the screws holding the laser blades in are not they don't appear to be stainless, which is kind of weird. But anyway, so gonna give this a shot and see how it goes. Okay, so it's just got a bolt and a lock washer there. So before those it appears. One day I really should do a uh, review on this rigid uh, shop vac blower thing. I cannot believe the number of things I've used it for. Like from leaf blowing to like, cleaning the patio up to like getting sand and dirt off the driveway so the kids can rollerblade to all the things you use for a shop vac. This thing has been probably one of the most used power tools just from its uh, capability. Blowing up pool lines, the whole shebang. Okay, so that back piece is coming loose now, so be a little bit careful here because I know there's a nut that I'm trying to get access to here. So let's just take this out carefully and this guy. Okay, not much else there. It's literally just a, a, essentially a four piece nut, which is interesting. Okay. And how is this going to work? I'm assuming that what I'm going to be doing here. There's no washer in there. It's a uh, round edge with a lock piece on it. Okay, good. And then, so I think what basically is going to happen is I'm going to bring this guy here. Let's just move you out of the way for a sec. We'll bring him up like that. Get rid of these pieces here. It doesn't seem to be anything super special in there. Oh, there is a there are two side pieces, so it's actually got a sheared off piece, so it actually does go in there like a... It's got a piece to it, that's good. Okay, and then we'll put this guy back on. Should probably put some Loctite on here, but just because I don't really know what I'm doing there, I'm going to see if that works. Yeah, okay, so that actually feels like it's moving right. And then this guy... Basically, get him in there, line up the holes, and then put the screws back in. That's kind of the next piece. So I'm going to turn the unit over, over to begin with. I think here just to, to see what's going on. So just to give it so I'm not holding up with one hand here. Well, the good thing is it really does kind of guide glide in place there a little bit. He says that and then knocks it off, but see if we can start getting a couple screws back in to start being the guide. Oh, very trivial. Good. Okay, let's get them all half started and then we'll tie them down in a, a cross pattern. Hopefully this is as easy as this appears to be, is what I'm hoping. And I'm going to have to watch this to figure out if it's just that that wasn't on tight enough or what the story is. But I'll give this a, another test mo after this, make sure we're good. It 
feels like it's still spinning properly. So just go around the four of them, give them hand tight. I don't think they need much more than that. It's really just a, yeah, that's good. Too bad they don't have Robertson heads, but oh well, that's just the way it is. Okay, the blades are still looking sharp and new. Well, that appears like it might have been the repair. I don't really know why these are so pretty. I'm assuming this is just as simple as doing that. I think these are going to get replaced with some... Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. I'll replace these uh, with some stainless Robertsons, I think, when I figure out the size and the, the, uh, the gauge of these. So right now they just got a bunch of junk it's probably yeah, they're not spinning as freely as they probably would but we'll get there in a sec anyways that appears to be reattaching the uh, the mower blade deck back to the the echo flow uh, mower so hope that's helpful for somebody have a great day uh, I figured I would actually just show you a one of the slight maintenance items that you do as well is that sometimes twigs and uh, leaves and such uh, can get in here and it doesn't really jam it up. It actually does a very good job of uh, getting rid of this stuff, but there has been a time when I've noticed that it does kind of a, a bit of a driving hop when it can't get one of the things spinning properly. So, um, so generally I just come in here and do a, like this one here is pretty, tight like that and it's, it's, it's got all that muck, muck on it there which needs to come out essentially so it's just jammed clippings and usually there's a twig or a more likely weed it's usually like a you know a Queensland lace style uh, stem or stock or something like that it usually gets stuck in there and it uh, seems to make a when it goes to the edge of the property or whatever so anyway it's uh it's a pretty simple thing to do. Uh, the clean out really is just spinning and moving the uh, the wheels around and stuff usually comes so you can grab it. I have used a pair of needle nose to get the hard ones out once in a while, but pretty pretty trivial to get cleaned. So, for example, here's a, a piece. So I basically just usually get something like this and then just hold on it with a straight and spin it. So. It, uh, get the stuff out of here pretty easily basically you just need to hold it to the tire a little bit and, or whatever these things are they're pretty cool actually to be honest but it's uh that's basically it just enough to give a little bit of you know, there's some stuff there so give it a little bit of encouragement then hold it to the tire spin the tire around and the stuff usually just comes right out do it at the bottom. There we go. Gravity, your friend. Do, 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 do. Oh, there's another twig. So those ones are the ones that, like it's just this piece of like, you know, a little bit larger weed or something like that that gets in there. And then they spin freely. Some of the matted stuff usually happens after you cut when it's you know a damp morning or something like that. But I haven't done this very often to be honest. It doesn't collect that much stuff. I think it's because it's just collecting such small pieces of it as opposed to long ones like the bigger long tractors do. Anyway, there we go. I'm gonna just do a quick little blow off of the Good enough.
one quick addendum. So these uh, bolts actually do appear like they, they're, they're just a very well painted covered bolt. So it's not actually, well, I don't know if it's rust or dirt, but anyway, so I'll probably just try and ride these out a little bit and see, but it looks like there's a bunch of gunk here that stops these from freely swinging. So it looks like you're gonna have to do some blade maintenance on this once in a while. Anyway, it's, uh, it's been a good unit so far. I've had it for, I don't know, a few months. I'll do a full review on the uh, programming and the, the, uh, the usage. It's, uh, yeah, pretty happy with it, aside from this minor um, blade deck detaching thing. Anyways, once again, have a great day.